Let's discuss transport and nanowires. Um, just some bits of reminding. Um, the, the concentration of uh, carriers which are responsible for transport can be calculated at the, at the Fermi level as the integral up to the, up to the Fermi level of the density of states. Um, because we're integrating to the Fermi level, so we can ignore this um, the Fermi Dirac distribution. It's kind of assuming the uh, zero temperature, um, the zero temperature case, and the density of states we can get from the dispersion relation. And in one dimensions, um, the dispersion relation is um, in the following. So the energy, uh, the eigenvalues depend on the two quantum numbers, n x and n y. So those are the dimensions where which, which are which are quantized the nanoscale dimensions, and the total um, energy as a function of momentum would look like that. So we have the constant terms, h bar square pi square over two m, and then we have n x square over l x square plus n y square over l y square, and uh, so, and we have the continuum uh, part which is not quantized. That's this h bar square kz square over 2m. So when x and y belong to integer numbers. And we um, draw this nanowire. This kind of this is our, our quantized dimensions. Let's say it's L x and L y. This will be L z. And then we previously we calculated the the density of states, so we know how the density of states look. There will be this um, the sum of these uh, um, uh, uh, one over one over square root of e spikes. So the density of states is proportional to one over square root, and then as a function of energy. Your density of states would then look like some sort of spikes every time you hit um, some of those some of those modes. Okay, now let's discuss what will happen if you put this um, if you put this nanowire between the contacts and apply electric field. So we can draw the diagram like that, and it will be a kind of a mixed diagram. In the, so we will have this is our KZ, the momentum, which is not quantized. This will be the energy scale, and assuming that the that this free particle model, so we have a parabolic dispersion relation, and then we will have the electrodes, uh, electrodes attached to these um, yeah. Then we have the electrodes attached to this um, nanowire, and we apply the electric field, so we apply the, the bias voltage. And there will be a difference in the chemical potentials on the left and right electrode. So let's call this one mu source. And this one will be mu drain. And the distance between those, this is our bias voltage, E times Vb. What will then happen? Is that the the chemical potentials will align, and uh, because the electric field is created, now you have this imbalance, and uh, and the imbalance will be a sort of uh, matching these bias voltages there. So we will have states populated all the way up to here, and then on this side they will only populate to this value. then you can actually look for what happens in this narrow in this narrow region between this point and this point so we would be interested in in this imbalance on this side here so we will have this is our momentum at the drain potential and this one is the momentum at the source potential and all the transport happens within this um, within this narrow region um, so this is a difference in momentum, which would, which would, so basically somewhere in the middle you will have the, like the, 
um, the equilibrium position, and this is because we applied electric field, so we're now out of equilibrium. And the electrons um, between those two quasi Fermi levels um, in this region will only uh, carry current, right? That's the that's your imbalance between the right moving particles and the left moving particles. So this imbalance is the is the current. So how do we how do we compute this current? Um, we can just start simply counting. So what's the definition of a current? So current is uh, the electrical charge times the number of electrons which which move to to the right in this in this diagram. So this these guys here and uh, divided by the uh, time it takes the electrons to transit across the nanowire. So this is our number of electrons uncompensated. And this is the time to traverse the nanowire. And we're using the assumption that the temperature is zero. And now we we actually need to consider a few more things. We would need to calculate the time and uh, and this number of electrons. So let's um, let's do this. So first we would uh, be interested in what's the velocity of the electrons. So the velocity of the electrons. And the velocity we are interested in would be the group velocity. So because this is um, this is a nanoscale process, so you want to see basically the electron is, is a wave packet, and then you see how fast it propagates. So we use our group velocity, and again, by definition, it's the derivative of the uh, dispersion relation, so 1 over h bar and d dk. Then if your um, imbalance here is small, if the difference, so in this region is the difference between source and drain voltages is small, then on average you can actually use um, this derivative at the Fermi level um, at some equilibrium position basically. So your V at the Fermi level would be just a derivative at that position H bar D DK at EF. Now the the transit time. Let's calculate this transit time. So it would be related to the length of the wire. So we have our two contacts and then we have the nanowire here. This is our lens. Let's uh, label it L. So in the time then would be the lens over the velocity and we use our Fermi velocity from here. So you get L over one over h bar the decay. Okay, that part is is, not, is now fine. That was the first ingredient, and the second one is to get the number of electrons. So this n. And let me uh, zoom in actually and write uh, and draw this thing a bit more clear and and, uh, and on the larger. Yeah. So we found this part of the parabola. And then we have our mu drain and the mu source. And there will be restrict restricting between those points. And that's where our states um, are sitting. So those those are the electrons we are interested in. Those are the uncompensated electrons. But when we were deriving the density of states uh, previously, we were using this um, this trick uh, of calculating how many states in the k space you have, and basically there will be only a, a limited number of states available, where the separation between those states is this delta k is two pi over the length of the nanowire. So we use the same the same. Uh, approach we used previously to derive the density of states. So now the number of electrons then would be the 2 because of spin 
And then you integrate only in this region between this uh, our KD and the K source between those two points. So we integrate from the KD to K source. DK divided by the distance of the, between those two points. So that's your 2 pi over L. All right, and that's basically that's basically all the ingredients we need. So now let's compute. So the current then would be, where is it? So the current is uh, this one. So electron charge times the number of the electrons divided by the transit time, and that's then two because of spin times the electron charge times the integral k g k s and uh, dk over 2 pi over l times 1 over h bar l d dk that's the velocity term here and we see nicely that the lens cancelled that's pretty surprising result so you already immediately see that the lens is gone and uh, Quite, quite interesting, so the current doesn't depend actually on the length of the nanowire. So the current is 2e over h. I'm just putting together 2 pi and h bar, so 2e over h integral. And then we can change the, the units because this kd is the mu d and the k source is the mu source. We go to the, um, to the energy and we have these decays move away you just have in terms of the energy so it's d and this is the mu drain mu source and then if you integrate basically only the, this integral it's easily computed then you have 2e over h of the chemical potential of the source minus the chemical potential of the drain well the current is now 2e square over h if we go from these uh, chemical potentials to the bias voltage we applied times the V drain source we used it. And the second electron comes from the changing dimensions from energy to voltage. So your VD source is E mu S minus mu D. Um, oops, sorry about that. It's divided by E, obviously, and then yeah, so it's a mu source minus mu drain because actually it's a mu drain minus mu source, but then the electron charge is negative, so you kind of swap them there. And and if you look at this equation, now you have it in the form so current equals something times the times the voltage. So this one is the, the units of conductivity actually, and you can then. Um, write down this G, so the conductivity, it's, it's usually labeled G0, and it equals 2E square over H, and it's called the conductance quantum. And it's actually quite, quite a surprising result, so then if you can write it in terms of resistance, that would be H over 2E square, and it's approximately 12.9 kilo ohm resistance. Uh, irrespective of the length of the wire or materials or anything like that. So quite quite a surprising result. So if you take a nanowire, let's say made of the, the gold atoms, uh, very long lens, you should be able to get this resistance of 12.9 kilo ohm. So the question is where this resistance comes from and uh, why, why such a surprising result appeared.